All right. <clears throat> this is part two. Let's see how long we can take. Here we go. YouTube channel taken down. Why would you want my YouTube channel taken down when it's a source of income for me and your son, number one? Number two, because I'm telling the truth about who you are and what happened between us. Is that it? Because I'm telling the truth? I can see if I was lying. Then you could then you could feel some type of way. Like, yeah, the bitch is lying about me on YouTube. No, I was literally telling the truth about our situation. Like, hardcore, raw truth about our situation. And I don't see a lot of people doing that. A lot of people be scared. Me? A lot of people be scared. There go her accent. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, um, most people really don't want the, nothing to do with the internet, okay? Um, hello, hello. Most people don't want to be blasted all over the internet. I mean, that might be a thing, you know? Yeah, I was not scared of that. And so, um, what, what I noticed, the pattern, and, and I'm, I, I think I noticed this with priests, that the path when, when me and a guy that I'm dating, when we break ties, the first thing he tries to do is destroy my career or destroy something that, you know, he try, he helps me with. That's a lot of damn hatred for somebody wanting to destroy your shit like that. I ain't never had a nigga want to destroy, destroy me. Who the hell you dealing with, bitch? <laughs> Somewhat, like, Maybe he was a moderator, or maybe he was a cop. Maybe he, um, like, priest used to Tomb take writer. money Damn. from my graphic design clients. You know what I mean? Like, he used to be the one that did the money transaction. Because I wanted him to manage my graphic design business while I did Why do you throw people in positions that, number one, they may not be qualified for? A man who makes $400 a week who don't even make my pussy wet, and you throwing him in a position to collect money on your behalf for what? Ain't he supposed to be at work? His ass supposed to be working. If he only making $400 a week, bitch, he needs to get a second damn job, not worry about your shit. I mean, unless and until y'all decide together that, okay, this is what we're gonna do and this is how it's gonna work, Da, 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 da. And you sitting up here acting like y'all fucking teenagers, bitch. You should be well into your career by now any motherfucking way, bitch. Where you didn't even need him. But carry on. All the graphic design. Because then it would take a lot of the responsibility off of me. And I was going to have him do the books, the accounting. I was going to teach him that stuff. Because he wanted to, to learn more about money and finance. He wanted to be in investing. Oh, so all Lord. Of the, all of the stuff that there I knew about money and business, I was going to teach him. So oh my God. Business, I was like, all right, if I could just get him to just start taking payments first and learn that, then I'll start teaching him the other stuff. He fucked that up. Mm, 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 mm. He fucked that up. Because <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. So how I just. You, <laughs> how do you fuck collecting money up? I just noticed a pattern with, with the guys that have tried to date me and so do we over and I just so do we to them all together. They try to do whatever they can to destroy my mm -hmm. business and my reputation, my money and my, you know, the things that I've worked so hard on most of my life. And it almost makes me feel like, girl, I would never talk to another man again if I dated a bunch of damn men that want to destroy my damn life. What the hell? When do you just stop talking, period, and cocking your legs open, bitch? Don't forget everybody you was, uh, everybody you dealt with, you was abused by, too, so. When I was with them, they was jealous of that to some degree. You know, because why would that be the first thing that you do? And see, my thing is, I knew that my son's father loved his job. He had this job. Priest loved his job that he worked at. And he worked at his city hall in Atlanta. He loved his $400 a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he would help put together the events there. We oh used to have a lot God. of events all the time because you know the mayor would come mm. and you know it's, it's city hall. So they would have like New Year's Eve events and Christmas parties and all type of philanthropic events and people would come in and out. And well, if this was a city job. He wasn't getting paid. Then what the fuck was it? What was they? They weren't paying him. It's a city job. <laughs> 
that he would have to set up for these events. And he loved his job so much. When he and I broke up, nothing in me said, maybe I should try to get him fired from his job. Right? Maybe I should try to get him fired from his job. Knowing he loves this job, regardless of what he's doing to me, that's that's deceptive or ugly. The last thing I'm going to do is like call his boss and be like, by the way, every woman that comes into City Hall is basically sexually harassing and asking for their phone number and trying to date them and shit. That's what we used to do. Girls used to come in City Hall and have to do community service, okay? And when, when, when girls were coming in, he would try to holler at them and basically build these these relationships with them and end up sleeping with them. Wait a god dang on minute. So, bitch, you trying to compare that to sexual harassment? Oh, you, that's why, that's why you get what you get. Because you was a trifling, no good bitch. <laughs> you know, and that's who used to be, that's what he used to use his Instagram for. Mm, mm, his mm. Instagram page was a whole bunch of women that. And again, you're polyamorous. Why do you give a shit? That used to go to City Hall and needed to do community service. And so he would follow them on Instagram and chit chat with them through Instagram. And so, um, <laughs> did I call his job and be like, by the way, <laughs> you know, such is, such is, such is happening. I could have, but I did, you know, and that would have, that would have definitely, um, excuse me, but if they were getting harassed and they didn't report it, bitch, who are you to call up to his job and say he was flirting? That's why I hate your stupid ass. You is a raggedy bum bitch if I ever seen one. Oh my God. You deserve every bad thing that has happened to you, bitch. <laughs> I cannot. I had him lose his job. So I don't, I don't, that's not the first thing I think of. I don't think of well, what else can I destroy in this person's life simply because we're not together. You know, that's not, that's not my thought process. So it's a shame that these men think that. Um, how many women experience this, but you have to, uh, wait, 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 wait. Exactly. They're preparing us for our life partner, but look at you now. How many women experience this? Do you have a platform for the women, how to bounce back? Exactly. But here's my thing about this. I think a lot of people think because I, I share the stories about bouncing back that I just want to tell my business or I just want to make him look bad. Nah, he made him look bad. If he do something positive, I'll say, oh, he did something great. He did something positive. He was a great person. Just how I used to talk about him when he and I was together. When he, was, when he and I was together, I used to talk about all the positive things that he did. With it. And, and that's every guy. You know, even guys that I've never, that I haven't lived in years. And, and guys, usually I'm still their friend. So it's easy for me to say something good about an ex. But if I'm sitting up here and I'm telling you something negative about, a, a, about an ex of mine, and I'm telling you some real shit about this, too. I'm telling you how I survived this shit. And relationships, like the relationship I have with my son's father, break women apart. Like, women, you guys, I, I think a lot of people just don't understand how women are genuinely built. And how a lot of the things that happen between us and men kind of destroy our manhood. And you know how uh, our manhood, our womanhood, you know how men protect their manhood. You know how men, like, certain things you can't say? No, bitch. Can't no man destroy me. I may cry. I may shed some tears. I may get a little depressed, bitch. But, um, you know, it depends on the situation. I'm not talking about, I know there's people that get divorces and, you know, things of that nature. But just us single women out here dating or, or you know, don't compare yourself to people that's really been through some shit, rat. Because their their manhood is such a fragile thing that they try to protect. Well, women, we have femininity. We have things that we protect as well. So when I'm going through this thing that I'm going through with my son's father and people are seeing me get on the internet and I'm crying and I'm talking about me being pregnant and I'm talking about the verbal abuse. I'm talking about, mm -hmm. you know, all of the manipulation and all of the things that I've been through. Verbal abuse meaning wash your ass. <laughs> Clean up the room. Wash the sheets. That's verbal abuse to her, y'all. I'm talking about these things to help other women understand that, yeah, I went through this. This is what I went through. I made it through. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. 
Yeah, I had postpartum depression. Yeah, I had to go to counseling. Yeah, I gained a lot of weight from emotional eating because it was a very traumatic experience. But this is what I'm doing to get out of all of this. This is what I had to do to get out of all of this. And it's stages. It's stages. And that's what you get to see if you look at my YouTube channel. If you go back to, to the videos that I, I posted from the time I met my son's father, right, which was in 2017 and to now, and it's 2020, if you see that, if you go from back there and start watching, you will see the progress in me. You will see how I've changed and how I became a better person. Yeah, I'm still silly. Yes. <laughs> you know, I make mistakes sometimes. I'm, I'm not a perfect woman, but I'm a lot better woman than I used to be. And I want women to see that. I want especially younger women because my gem demographic is like women between the ages of like 22 and like 45. And so I used to do, I used to base my content on helping men all of the time. And when I ended up with my son's father and I saw men celebrate how poorly this man treated me when i seen them be so happy to see a man abandon a woman with a child i just never seen so many men take delight in stomping a woman down ever i had never seen that and for, for them to take pride in a man stomping a woman down that supported them for such a long time really surprised the fuck out of me because my whole youtube channel was based on me supporting men and me teaching men how to interact with women my my channel was based on relationship advice and i would do cooking tutorials sometimes i would do other types of videos i would do videos about money i would do videos about business i would do videos about graphic design but i had never seen so many men tried to drag me down and put me down until my son's father abandoned me in a hotel pregnant and so many men cheered him on for it and so this is what made me decide to start doing more content for women so women can understand if this is happening to me right if this happened to me i know it has to be happening to a whole bunch of women and so when i started getting email you put your poor decision making on display and thought that men were just going to sympathize with your every little move that's what you thought for women women were emailing me like sansare i see that you're going through blah 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 well this is my story and they just started sending me stories of how they going through single motherhood alone and how the fathers of their children are doing blah 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 and then it was even girls like hi sansare I'm a mistress right now and I'm pregnant, but my son's father is, is married to someone else and he won't tell his wife about me. All types of different stories. And the fact that a woman could look at me with, with me being a hundred percent without me. Oh, isn't that wonderful? A woman could come and tell you that she's a mistress pregnant by a married man and he won't tell her about, he won't tell his wife about her. Isn't that a, 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 an accomplishment? <laughs> Being a mistress, because I did talk about being a mistress before to, to a completely different man. But priest, I was never priest mistress. And so. You were never a mistress, period, bitch. Nobody's ever taken care of you. Nobody's ever paid your bills. You on here talking about you paying niggas rent, bitch, or mortgage, and car notes, and buying out the VIP section, and da 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 da. Even with me telling the story about being a mistress before was positive to women. And I think men want me to be a specific way in their eyes instead of who I am. You know, I'm, I'm me. I'm not the version of who you want me to be. Men always want women to be their version of a princess or a queen instead of who we are. Girl, don't nobody want you to be shit. They called you out on your bullshit. Bottom line, period, point blank. Everybody not going to agree with your dumb ass decisions, bitch. And that's the reason why most women are honest about their sexuality. They are honest about being mistresses. They are honest about, you know, the mistakes that they made and the poor choices in men. Because when we do say, I made a poor choice in a man, and the reason why I made a poor choice in a man, because I was all deep in love and shit. And I was just trying to stick by his side because people always try to convince women to be this down-ass chick. 
but men don't stick with women through that. You know, listen, they tell you you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, right? Because that's not natural, bitch. Women are the more sensitive beings, the sensitive people. So we tend to um, put up with more shit. You can't expect a man just to stay around after you keep you hoeing or whatever you doing. The fuck are you talking about? Heard that can't turn a hoe into a housewife. But these men expect us to turn these homeless, jobless, convicted felons into husbands and kings. Who? Y'all expecting us, like men are expecting us to take them as they are, right? With with all of their baby mamas, all of their debt. Um, ma'am, no. First of all, bitch, you can't approach me. I mean, you can approach me if you want to, but trust and believe, you're going to get the, um, you going to get, uh, the FBI going to come out in me in the beginning. You can ask me for your number if you're presentable or ask, you ask me for my number. I give you my number. We have the conversation. I listen. It's all about listening. Okay. And then I had to learn that um omission people lie how do you say like people lie with omission if that's how i say it right like people people you find out certain you learn that you find out certain things after the fact and then the person be like oh well you didn't ask me so that's why i say are you married are you single are you a widow are you divorced are you separated do you have children do you like men have you had sex with a man I go there, honey. Trust me. I go there. All oh, they, they got damn emotional issues and trauma and shit. But we supposed to be perfect. Oh, please. And that's the problem. Nobody that's what I said. That's nobody the problem I saw. So I was like, okay, Ain't nobody perfect but God, bitch. Problem? Oh, I have a platform. Right? So I'm going to use my platform to tell my story. Not care what people think about me. Because you can't. You can't have that type. You don't care? Oh, hell, you could have fooled me, shit. Well, fear. You can't be worried about what people think about you and get on the platform and start telling stories. Because people are... That's why you respond to Bomb Cherry and Ebony Man, looking for Ebony Man, trying to find out who he is. Um, Stupidity Exodus. STL for you. You want to find out who all these people are, but you don't care. I'm confused. Always going to have an opinion about you as a person. All I keep doing is trying to get people to be respectful when they talk to me, especially men. Like, um, excuse me. When the fuck have you been able to dictate somebody else's reaction or make them behave a certain way? What? Talk to me with some respect or I'm going to just block you. Like, I'm not about to sit up here and go back and forth with you. That's just a waste of the goddamn time. You know, so anyway, so what I noticed about uh, my son's father, my son's godfather, uh, most of the committed relationships I've been in, and I only been and I can count on one. You know what I find is funny. Oh Lord, she about to lie again, talking about counting on one. Hand. What the fuck she about to say now? Anyway, what I find funny is that um, you know, she'll sit up there. And, and she will answer the question, the tough questions, per se, you know. But it makes sense to her when she explains it. And then she forgets her lies on top of that. But she will try to explain the shit out of it. <laughs> and it just don't make sense. Or she didn't lie and forgot what she lied about, but go on, yeah. sis. Because I usually do long-term relationships, right? So before I met my, my son's oh, father, God. I dated Kumati for like two months. And Kumati and I were friends for a long time, still friends to this day. Did she just <laughs> Did she just say she had long-term relationships and she only dated Kumati for two months? And... Um, I was in a committed relationship with a guy named Courage. He owns this photography company called 2020 Photography. 
And if you go look, 2020 photography, oh he's he shot like Black China. Um, he's a really good. He's a really good um, photographer. He's always been that. Um, when I met him, I, I saw the potential in him that nobody else saw. Like no one oh was paying God. him any attention. And during this time, I was pretty a pretty pretty popular model. Oh so what I did God. was I saw that he wanted to be a photographer. So I helped him work on his craft, and he ended up becoming oh like one of the best oh photographers God. inside of the entertainment industry because but of her. He never getting credit for that. No, oh, when he child. brings my name up in conversations, he tries to make it seem like. It wasn't me that would sit up with him for hours and hours uh, teaching, you know, editing techniques and sitting up. Well, bitch, next time you learn your lesson, next time you sit up with your husband, not your quote unquote boy toy. Therefore, um, like hours trying to do photo shoots so he could test his lighting. And shit, stuff like that. I would sit up with him for hours at a time. Like all we did was work. Uh-huh. All I did was help him work on his craft all day, every day. Mm. But when he speaks about me, he doesn't give me credit for being that one. Did you have Dominique by this time? Was you all tied up and tangled up in these relationships while Dominique was with her daddy, and you was focused on your men? Oh, okay. He tells other people negative things about me. He would speak publicly, negatively about me. When we was together, he used to try to sabotage my business. And so the, the thing, it just boggles my mind that every guy that I ended up in a committed relationship with after things were over, instead of coming to the public, publicly saying how kind I was to them, how good I treated them, how I supported their dreams and their goals, how I invested my time, energy, and money into their shit, what they go do is try to depict me as something that I'm not. And that's what's stopping me from being in another relationship with a man. And it's almost stopping me from being in a friendship because even with Michael, I I, I never would have thought Michael would have moved to Utah. My son's godfather would move to Utah and then turn around and try to delete like stuff that I'm working on. Like, why would he do that? You know, because I thought once he once he moved to Utah, we done. We hadn't had a conversation. I haven't talked to him in months. So for me to go to my Facebook and to see he was trying to delete my Facebook watch page, knowing that that's where I post my videos, knowing that one of my sources of income is posting videos, why the fuck would you try to delete that page? I just don't understand. So, so now I'm just going to be very leery. Um... About what I want and, and what I am um, getting and what I'm requiring from these men. I just have to do better with that. And I want more women to, number one, stop giving men the benefit of the doubt. And when you catch them in that first big lie, because I caught Michael in his first big lie, excuse me, when Justice was like seven months. And that's when I found out he was married. Okay. And him and his ex-wife were sharing a story and that's when i should have stopped talking to michael even as a friend because we... oh wow you think really oh wow she is the most smartest most beautifulest thing in this world shout out to keith murray oh my you think you should have stopped talking to him after you just had the betrayal of the century <laughs> it wasn't even deep and I found this out. I was like, why didn't you tell me something like this? Like, you sitting here fussing at me about priests being uh, separated from Sidonia and not speaking up, and your ass has, didn't say anything. So you in no position to, to, to even hate priests because you're doing the very thing he was doing. You know? So just to feel like... Here, here's another thing. I'm going to keep it 100 with, with the women. But she continues to make him her child's godfather. Was this before or after she made him in charge of her Facebook, like, c- come on. <laughs> you ever felt like unloved? Like you're the unloved one all the time. That's what I felt like. I feel like every time I get in a relationship with a guy, right? I feel like he's always hiding from me the woman that he genuinely loves. And I'm just the woman that is such a good friend to him, such a nice person so good of a person that he feels like he has to keep me around and he also doesn't want to hurt my feelings so he'll keep me around yeah he care about me 
but he's not in love with me how he's in love with these other women. That's what it feels like to me. It, it, it feels like that to me. Like, it was like that with Priest, because he still had these, these feelings for Sidonia, I guess. But then again, you know, how terrible he treated her, putting her in a position to even be, uh, you know, in this little weird three-ring circus we was in. You must not genuinely care about somebody to, to put them in such a thing. But for Michael to be hiding a woman and for guys like I, I when I start going over inventory and I start thinking about guys that I'm still friends with, guys that I used to date, guys that even a guy that I may have been sleeping with, I'm thinking now that I'm looking at all of the relationships, it's always been like there's always been like some woman they've been hiding. And I'm the unloved one that has no clue, right? That I'm the woman on the side or I'm the woman that um, they're using to help get over their feelings for this other woman that they're not even telling me about. And then I don't find out about this woman until later. See, here's, here's the thing. People never understood. Some people didn't understand why I brought up the story of me and Chris Law. Y'all remember the story of me and Chris Law? Me and Chris Law, when I met Chris Law, he was in a relationship with a flight attendant. And this flight attendant was never around. She was always gone. And apparently she had cheated on him. Okay? Me and Chris started a friendship first. All right? And I just enjoyed Chris. Chris was such a fucking delight. He used to make me laugh so hard. I just enjoyed who he was as a person. He was handsome to me. Even though he was overweight, he was handsome to me. He had a beautiful smile to me. He had a good personality. He used to just laugh at the drop of a hat. And he just always had a good comeback every time I had people do that. Like, I was like, that's a thing. He, he introduced me to different types of relationships, like polyamory, polygamy. I didn't even know these things were real. I thought this was like some like little made up thing that people do and, and, and no one could possibly be happy in a relationship that's non-monogamous. You know, I didn't even know there were such things. So he was teaching me this at the same time. And unfortunately for him, him participating in this type of behavior, him, his sexuality, the more of him genuinely having love and care for another human being. See, when people do casual, like, things, you ever seen two single people do a casual fling? When two people, two single people are doing a casual fling, it doesn't mean that either one of those people needs to be disrespected simply because they're not in a monogamous relationship. That's not what that means. I think a lot of people think people who are promiscuous are supposed to be disrespected because they, quote, unquote, don't have any type of respect for their body. Listen, the way that you carry yourself and the things that you do with your body doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. Some people out there just love having sex. You know, and with Chris, and I say this today, I say this then, I say it today, Chris is one of the best sex partners. I have yet to meet a man who has had better sex with me than Chris. Me and Chris had the best damn sex ever. I haven't met anybody else that I had sex with that good. Chris was the only person that I decided to just be his mistress, right? Because when, cause when I met him, he and I was just friends, and he was dating another girl who had cheated on him, and she was, you know, not around because she was a flight attendant, but he was engaged to her. So they were supposed to get married in a couple of months, and then they ended up getting married, and I still was sleeping with him after that, which to me, I still feel like as a woman, I could have dealt with my personal feelings and my pain better than being, you know, being somebody's mistress. That was a weird way to deal with my feelings, like, well, why did I do that? But it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, why didn't I choose something better? You know what I mean? Why didn't I do something better than that to do with my feelings? So with with um, me deciding to, to be his mistress like that, it's all I could be. But still to this day, still to this day, I have yet to find somebody that I had that much freedom sexually with. Okay, cause you, cause I guess, I guess. So, bitch, are you looking for sex or are you looking for love? I mean, what the fuck is it? Cause you keep hopping on sex like, you know, like a damn sex thing, bitch. When you in a committed relationship, you kind of got some type of restraints or boundaries. I'm, I suppose. I'm, I'm just assuming. But with, but with Chris, we had so much freedom 
to do whatever it is that we wanted to do and there was no pressure there because we didn't have a relationship so it was just like no pressure there and I'm not saying that it's right it just felt a little bit easier to do sexually and I felt more comfortable trying new things with him and so I, I genuinely felt like we had a friendship there and that you know I could be myself around him and he could be himself around me and you know, we could talk about each other's relationships. Or, and I never really talked to him, talk a lot about my relationships to him. I left all that out. Like, I didn't talk to him about my relationships, my business, nothing. Because I didn't want to. I didn't want, I only wanted to be physically connected to him. I did not want to mentally or emotionally be connected to him. So I wasn't, you know. And I think I cared for him as a friend. And I loved him as like a, like a best friend would love another uh, you know their best friend but as far as me trying to be his wife or like his girlfriend or something like that I, I never would have done that because I never looked at him in that way I looked at him as like my friend bitch I'm pretty sure he never even gave you a second thought a second of considering you to be a wife I mean unless you plan on proposing to him bitch Men are more usually the ones that do the proposing and the picking when it comes to marriage. But I, I put him in like this little box, this little box of he's just a guy that I sleep with and have a decent friendship that I'll never be married to, that I'll never be in a relationship with. I love the type of man that he is, and I'll probably date a man that has similar qualities, but I'll never with him so once i put a guy in that box i'm i'm the type of person that does that once i put you in a specific place that's just where you are i don't take you out of it and put you somewhere else it's hard for me to take you out that box and put you somewhere else that's why it was so it's so difficult for me when i broke up with my son's father when you know once i broke up with him it, it well not even broke up with him. once he broke up with me and i moved to california it was very difficult for me to put him in the maybe we can work it out box. No, it was just like, this fucking nigga just told me he don't love me, he don't want our baby, and he want to get back with his... Well, what kind of workout box you gonna put him in? <laughs> What's the nothing to work out? Extreme, a strange wife. What the fuck I look like? <laughs> wow. Putting him in the maybe we can get back together box. <laughs> Like, I'm good. Right? No, I just do what I need to do to get over it. So what I notice is with the pattern with these guys, even though I'm building friendships with them, we are somehow losing respect for each other along the way. Or maybe they're losing respect for me along the way because I'm too cool. You can't be too... You can't lose... Or, you don't lose respect for somebody being too damn cool. You lose from, respect for somebody being too goddamn needy and giving, giving a, a thousand percent in the first damn day, bitch. <laughs> cool with me. you can't be too cool with me okay because they mm, that's a whole nother video <laughs> that's a whole nother video you can't be too cool with them they be tripping man they, they take your kindness for weakness they they think if you they allow them to, to do whatever it is that they want to do that apparently you don't have any respect for yourself so now it's their turn to not have respect for you like with Chris, I always just felt like I respect you as a man. I respect you as a human being. I also respect you for being honest about where you stand so I could choose what I want to do with you. So I'm not going to disrespect your situation. I'm not going to, you know, do anything to, to fuck up our friendship. But even after our situation was over, I never went around Atlanta or any other place and spoke negatively about him. I never did it. And when people would come to me and speak about him, they would always tell me that he said something negative about me. And I couldn't understand. I would be like, why is he speaking negative? I, I always speak positive about him. I never tell people, you know, our secrets. Because what we were doing was a secret. Was... Ciao. <laughs> I mean the pain <laughs> that I'm going through right now. <laughs> I need a drink. I'm going to buy you a drink. All right, y'all. Let me get these on out here. Find the title. Feel free to hit the like, share, and subscribe. We feel like 
um, blessing the kid, dollar sign, C A N D Y L E N D five eight zero nine. Oh shit! All right, y'all have a good night.